In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Today we are celebrating Mass for Monday of the fifth week of Easter season. And as we prepare ourselves for the celebration, let us ask for God's mercy and healing in our lives. Lord Jesus, you heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Let us pray. May your right hand, O Lord, we pray, encompass your family with perpetual health, so that defending from all wickedness by the resurrection of your only begotten Son, we may make our way by means of your heavenly gifts, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There was an attempt at Iconium, both by the Gentiles and the Jews, together with their leaders, to attack and stone Paul and Barnabas. They realized it and fled to Lyconia, cities of Lystra and Derbe, and to the surrounding countryside, where they continued to proclaim the good news. At Lystra, there was a crippled man, lame from birth, who had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, who looked intently at him, saw that he had the faith to be healed, and called out in a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. He jumped up and began to walk about. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they cried out in Laconian, The gods have come down to, to us in human form. They called Barnabas Zeus and Paul Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, for he, together with the people, intended to offer sacrifice. The apostles Barnabas and Paul tore their garments when they heard this and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Men, why are you doing this? We are of the same nature as you, human beings. We proclaim to you good news, that you should turn from these idols to the living God, who made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all Gentiles to go their own ways. Yet in bestowing his goodness, he did not leave himself without witness. For he gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons and filled you with nourishment and gladness for your hearts. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. Because of your mercy, because of your truth. Why should the pagans say, where is their God? Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Heaven is in the heaven of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Judas not the Iscariot, said to him, Master, 
then what happened is that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world. Jesus answered and said to him, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and he will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It would seem that Jesus doesn't always like to answer questions. Many times when somebody asks a question, they get a reply that is either kind of off-putting and challenging, or cryptic, or seems unrelated. In this particular passage, it seems that Jesus is almost ignoring Judas, not the Iscariot, when he asks a question, because he's basically just continuing the teaching, the conversation, the monologue that he had before being asked the question. Talking about the connection between obedience to the commandments and the word, and how that is revelatory of our love. We in our culture have a love-hate relationship with obedience. We want other people to obey us, but we're not too keen on obeying others. We like to be independent autonomous, in control of ourselves, and we don't have, and we don't like having rules and regulations that we need to be obedient to. But aside from having an authority issue, if we step back and recognize that deep down, uh, obedience to authority aside, we still want to observe and stick with the truth, by and large, unless we're crooked. Because the truth, even though it's challenging, is probably as good as it's going to get. Lying, deceit, ignoring things, denying things, usually just brings more pain and misery upon ourselves. So even without knowing specifically the teachings of Jesus, we would say if he's rooted in the truth, then odds are the disciples are going to be rooted in the truth. And you're not going to say that you love God if you can't handle the truth, because God has no other way of so John's gospel tends to be a bit on the cryptic side with the language that he uses, but he's essentially referring to something that we would inherently subscribe to if we understood it from the depths of our hearts, that we believe that the truth is supposed to set us free despite the challenges that it has. We believe that Jesus is rooted in the truth and says that he's going to send the Holy Spirit to lead us to all truth. Because the words that Jesus uses and the teachings that he has are not com in totally inclusive, well, not totally uh, so exhaustive that there's not more to be explored. They all seem to be a bit ambiguous at times. Not that he's telling us two different things, but sometimes it takes us a while to understand the complexity and the nuances of the truth. How else can he take 600 mosaic laws and boil them down to two? And at the same time, Loving God with your whole heart, loving your neighbor as yourself, takes a lifetime to fully practice. We understand it's the right thing to do, it's just a bit of a challenge for us. So we need not worry too much about our obedience that we're following the letter of the law uh, to the nth degree, and if we don't, we're failing to love God. It's a matter we need to stay focused on trying to understand and explore the spirit of that is the truth, that is the word that Jesus is giving us. Let, it, let us humbly offer our prayers to God, the, fa the Father, and the source of all love and goodness. For all who work in the ministries of the church, May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit continue to conform their hearts and minds ever closer to Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For those without faith in Jesus, may our gracious God open our hearts to his love and mercy and to the glory of salvation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unemployed, may the Lord grant them the opportunity for gainful employment, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young people of our community and in our families, may the hope of Christ be their strength in the midst of this changing world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Vetus Kaiser, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all of our beloved dead, may they soon enjoy ever the everlasting life in paradise, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, O God, as we lift them to you, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, <clears throat> it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by, the <clears throat> by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When you eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have found us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restores to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of the saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.